Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome to this update on the forecast for severe weather for today going into tomorrow and Sunday across parts of the plains into the Midwest and Mid-South. We did a video yesterday. There have been a few changes since yesterday's uh, uh, video, so I wanted to outline those this morning. Again, apologies for the road noise. I am here in Russell, Kansas. Uh, had a pretty rough chase yesterday. Didn't see much there across western Kansas, but going to be in uh, positioning here shortly to get into parts of Nebraska for today's setup. That is where the SBC has outlined an enhanced risk level three out of five in the orange shaded region here. So parts of far eastern Nebraska, including Omaha, Lincoln, over toward Des Moines, Iowa, southward toward Kansas City, there in northeast Kansas, northwest Missouri, under the gun for the greatest severe threat today, with a broad slight risk area extending down to the south and southeast across Missouri, uh, western Arkansas, eastern Oklahoma, into north and central Texas. All hazards on the table for today. Tornado threat is there, especially there in the 10 hashed region in the enhanced risk. So eastern Nebraska, uh, southwest Iowa, uh, northwest Missouri, and northeast Kansas in that 10% hashed area there could see a strong tornado or two with any more sustained discrete supercells in this environment. Could see some tornadoes back here as well uh, in a true cold core type fashion. Uh, the 2 and 5% risks do extend back to the west. That could cover that threat. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But we have our 5 and 2% risk that also extends down into the slight risk into Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, and Texas, including the DFW Metroplex, Tulsa, over toward Little Rock, Springfield, Joplin, Jefferson City, in that 2 and 5% risk area there. Large hail also going to be a threat all the way down the dry line, especially up there in the enhanced risk region, a threat for some very large hail up there in that 30% hashed region. And then we also have a 15% hashed down the dry line as well. Damaging wind also going to be on the table for today. So an all hazards risk for today, pretty potent setup for this Friday. Then we go into tomorrow. Tomorrow has been the most well advertised day of this stretch uh, for good reason. But we have seen some changes in the overall setup. and We're gonna talk about those here in a second that may preclude a greater severe weather risk for Saturday. So this is the Saturday risk, April 27th, in large enhanced risk from Southern Iowa, Northwest Missouri, southward through parts of Eastern Kansas, Central and Eastern Kansas, Central Oklahoma, down into North Texas, including places like Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Wichita, Kansas City, Des Moines, in that enhanced risk for tomorrow. We do have a threat that extends up into the Great Lakes region, a little bit of a slight risk that extends up there, but the main threat is going to be in that enhanced risk region across the Central and Southern Plains. The chances for strong tornadoes are certainly there for this Saturday setup. 10% hashed risk there in the enhanced area. So we do have a, a pretty solid threat for some strong tornadoes here within that risk area of broad 2 and 5% tornado risks surrounding that. Large hail also going to be a threat, big 30% hashed area there, so we could see some very large hail with this setup. And the threat for damaging winds is going to be on the table as well. We're going to focus on Friday and Saturday in this video just for time's sake. Sunday is a little bit up in the air. The SPC now has a slight risk out from far southern Iowa, western Illinois, southward into the Arklatex region um, for the threat for severe weather. Uh, we don't have any significant severe weather uh, areas outlined yet, uh, but we do have that slight risk there. But we're going to have to see how Saturday uh, plays out before we know uh, more about Sunday. So that is why we're going to, to uh, not really talk about Sunday in this video. We're going to focus on the Friday and Saturday setups as those are the most potent days that we have on tap, at least at this point. We will be back if Sunday does warrant a risk, uh, a video uh, in uh, the upcoming days. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's first take a look at what's going on as we speak, recording this just before 8 a.m. Central Daylight Time. And the interesting thing here is that we are not seeing as widespread of convection across this region ahead of the northeast advancing surface low as we expected over the last couple days. We were expecting a pretty broad swath of precipitation and embedded, st embedded storms here across Nebraska and Iowa. We do see that here, pretty much a, a nice band of storms here across Iowa and northern Missouri up into Minnesota. But that is quickly moving off to the east. Just a few stronger storms here, just north of the surface low here into Nebraska. But other than that, it is fairly clear and we are expecting that to maintain itself into the early afternoon should allow for possibly an earlier start to storm initiation in these events uh, in these kind of cold core type events and again, we'll discuss that in just a second. But in these cold core type events, it is it doesn't take much to destabilize the atmosphere when you have a bit of a, a what is expected to be 
pretty intense uh, surface heating moving in with this surface low and uh, with a dry slot aloft. Here's our mid-level water vapor. Uh, the blues and greens and whites are your moist air and your yellows are your uh, drier air. And you see this dry slot back here. That is some drier air working its way in here and that is going to make, be uh, overspreading Nebraska and Iowa over the next several hours, allowing for pretty rapid destabilization of the environment steep lapse rates a lot from the slightly drier air that allows for quick destabilization in this environment so would expect to see some storms that may be part of our main round of our severe threat here up ahead of the surface low uh, start pretty early today probably sometime just after lunch maybe one at, at the latest 2 p.m. or so we'll start to see some more robust updrafts there ahead of the surface low we also have another batch of storms moving across eastern Oklahoma as we speak. Nice little QLCS structure there with some, some kinks in that line. Uh, was a pretty rowdy night across central Oklahoma. Several damaging wind reports, tornado report there in the Oklahoma City metro area. So this has been a pretty powerful line, which was expected. This line is expected to continue to move off to the east and northeast as we go into the next several hours, off into, the, into Missouri, western Arkansas. And that will leave the environment ahead of the dry line back here in western Oklahoma, uh, ready for environmental recovery and so we weren't sure uh, how the progression of this morning uh, an overnight round would go but it is moving off quickly to the east perhaps some more uh, damaging wind reports maybe some embedded tornado reports with this line as it moves off to the east but the main round of storms uh, is the conditional round of storms uh, is possible along the dry line here behind this and we'll have plenty of time to destabilize the atmosphere behind this morning round of storms Let's take a look now at our upper air maps from the SBC Mesoanalysis page. This is the current 500 millibar map. Here is our shortwave trough here, nice negatively tilted trough uh, moving through the central plains as we speak, strong jet streak uh, associated with this trough, 60, 70 knots of flow there rounding the base of this shortwave. This is going to eject off to the north-northeast today or continue to, to eject off to the north-northeast today and will have the tendency to close off, at least that what is what is progged with this particular shortwave, that we should see some closed, a closed contour to develop here at the core of the low, uh, upper low, and that will allow for that kind of cold, uh, classic cold core uh, setup to uh, persist here across Nebraska going into the early afternoon. As such, this trough will, will continue to move off to the northeast, and this, the axis of the trough is going to be somewhere up in here, the Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri vicinity by early afternoon. Therefore, this region to the south is going to be well behind the exit region of this trough, which makes uh, forecasting the threat down here across Kansas, Oklahoma, into North Texas quite difficult. It's going to be very, very much a conditional threat, and we're going to have to rely on strong surface heating, convergence along the dry line uh, to get storms to go because we don't really have the synoptic scale support for robust supercell development here down along the uh, southern portions of the dry line because our main forcing is going to be located up here in Nebraska, Iowa, northeast Kansas, northwest Missouri. So that is something interesting. Again, we'll take a look at the progression here on the models in just a little bit. But overall, very interesting setup for today, uh, and that's why the threat down here in the southern plains is going to be much more conditional than it is ahead of the axis of the trough uh, across the Midwest uh, in today's setup. So that is a, what is interesting about today's setup, very unique type setup. We still have a severe threat even though the trough is moving off to the northeast. Let's take a look down at the surface now. So right now, very tight surface low has developed as this trough has traversed the rocky surface low center somewhere there in northwest Kansas as we speak. Going to slowly move off to the northeast today as well. We'll be in very close proximity to that core of the 500 millibar, surf, uh, 500 millibar uh, closed low or potential closed low, and that will allow for that cold core setup as well. Uh, so, and also the uh, surface low may be, may be a little bit behind what progs were showing as well. So we may see this move kind of meander or more meander toward the central, south central Nebraska area by a late morning, early afternoon. And ahead of that would be your main severe threat with that moisture feeding up into the surface low. So we could see that severe threat start as far west as probably south central Nebraska there, the I-80 corridor perhaps, maybe Grand Island, even uh, as far west as Kearney perhaps. Uh, but we'll have to watch that for sure. And as we talked about before, given the tendency for less convection than what was progged, uh, we may see an earlier start to storms there. And that might mean a farther west start to storms, very close to the center of the surface low, come late morning, early afternoon. Uh, warm front draped out here to the uh, south and west. Looks like we may have two little uh, potential candidates for the warm front here. Looks like a little bit of a ripple here in the flow. I believe the latest mesoscale discussion mentioned that there is kind of a warm frontal zone down in here as well that the uh, this kind of uh, QLCS is interacting with will be our best short-term severe threat along that warm front in eastern Oklahoma. We do see a kink in the isobars here in, across um, eastern Kansas, which might 
uh, which looks to be probably our main warm front associated with this uh, surface low. That will continue to move off to the east, uh, northeast as well, and south of that will be a narrow tongue of favorable uh, ingredients for severe weather in that area. Low level jet going to be strong today as well, given that we have this strong, tight, low level cyclone. We will be able to maintain this low level jet throughout the day. 40, 50 plus knots of flow here all the way across from the northern plains, Great Lakes, down to the south into Texas. So a very broad swath of strong low level flow. That will allow for very strong low level shear in this environment. And thus any storms that form a little bit farther southeast of the surface low uh, in this plume of low level jet. Uh, will have the tendency to produce, uh, will be in an environment of strong low level shear and therefore may have the chance of producing some significant tornadoes. Back to the west, a little bit farther removed from the main core of the low level jet, so the low level shear might not be as strong very close to the surface low, but again, these cold core setups are, are quite thermodynamically driven uh, give, with strong low level instability and steep lapse rates aloft, so not too, that will allow for a, some compensation for slightly weaker low level flow to the to the west but out to the east if any storms do fire they will be in this uh, strong uh, low level jet and therefore will have that significant tornado risk uh, as they move off to the northeast here's our surface data at the present time uh, broad swath of 60 dew points here across much of the plains you can see where our surface low is uh, as we speak a little bit of a cyclonic circulation here the center of the cyclonic circulation right in there so our surface low at this point looks to be just east of the Colby, Kansas area. Uh, that is pretty far southwest from what earlier progs were showing. So uh, this is going to meander off to the northeast today, probably set up somewhere along the I-80 corridor, maybe just north of the I-80 corridor by midday or so. And that will allow for that warm front to uh, lift north as well. And then along that, uh, is going to be our favorite corridor for perhaps potential tornadic development somewhere from southeast Nebraska northward, south central southeast Nebraska, and then that warm front as it warm front as it lifts, that tornado threat will lift as well. Uh, 60s dew points across a broad swath here south uh, uh, ahead of, and south of that surface low up here from the Kansas-Nebraska border down into Oklahoma. 60s dew points here. A little bit of a worked over atmosphere, atmosphere here in uh, Oklahoma. Uh, the dew points have, have crashed into the low mid to, uh, uh, mid to upper 50s here uh, in the wake of the morning convection. Those again should recover pretty well I would suspect given that we have strong southerly flow uh, out ahead of this surface low. Would suspect that we see at least some recovery here by early afternoon. Um, across Oklahoma. Those dew points probably will get back up into the 60s with, with upper 60s here to the south across just south of the Red River. So would suspect some uh, some better moisture to make its way northward and we have some 60s dew points here in Kansas north of that activity that will make its way northward ahead of the surface low and south of the warm front. So sh we should have pretty rich moisture here across much of the region. Just we'll have to watch that Oklahoma corridor uh, and that may be a little bit of a bugaboo for the setup down there uh, and it, again it already was conditional but down there we could see if those dew points don't quite uh, make its way make, make their way back into the 60s that may negate the severe threat down there but overall pretty nice moisture here at the surface Surface, nice southeasterly flow, south southeasterly flow in the warm sector, uh, so, uh, helping to increase that low level shear and deep layer shear as well in this setup. Let's take a look at some soundings here. Twelve Z soundings from across the region just coming in as we speak. Uh, let's take one. Let's take a couple here. Let's take one at Topeka, Kansas. This may be a little bit just north of the warm front as it sits right now, but still a pretty good uh, depiction of the environment. Uh, yeah, a little bit of an in a surface inversion there. Temperatures in the 60s, low 60s there. So we might be just north of the warm front here at Topeka, Kansas. Uh, but decent instability already, elevated instability at this point. Uh, but we do have that instability that is, is expected to increase as we go into the afternoon with surface heating, some drier air moving in aloft. That will allow that instability to increase as we go into the afternoon. Kinematically looking pretty good, very strong low level shear at this point. A little bit of a wonky profile as you go up in the atmosphere. Uh, kind of some backing there above 500 millibars. So pretty wonky hodograph here. That will probably change as we get closer to the um, core of the of that jet streak as it moves off to the northeast uh, this afternoon but we do have very strong low level shear strong curvature in the low levels of the hodograph strong bearing and strengthening of the winds with height going from southeasterly winds at 10 knots at the surface to you know 50 plus knots of flow there just about a kilometer off the surface so very strong uh, and rapid veering and strengthening with height there in the lowest kilometer or so of the atmosphere that will allow for that tornado threat to persist into the afternoon across these regions uh, with some improvement of the upper level, mid and upper level uh, kinematics there. Uh, so all in all, a pretty good looking sounding here. 
Omaha, probably not going to give us much uh, else. You see there, though, a very similar look to it. Uh, elevated instability. We are north of the warm front here as well, but look at those kinematics. Very strong low-level shear. Significant low-level warm moist advection here ongoing north of the front. Uh, again, that will persist south of the front as well uh, with as that surface low lifts off to the northeast. So uh, favorable looking environment already across the region. Just need some low-level destabilization, which we should get with some surface heating. Here's our visible satellite as we speak. You see some, some uh, uh, clearer skies moving in from the west here across uh, central Kansas, western Oklahoma. Those will continue to make their way off to the northeast as well. So we should have strong surface heating and that drier air aloft making its way in, helping to really destabilize the atmosphere. Perhaps on the upper end, upper echelon uh, for a cold core type event. Uh, and so that will lead to uh, the development of robust updrafts early on in this setup. All right, let's take a look at some model data here. This is the 6Z NAM from earlier this morning. Uh, and uh, of course, we're doing this a little bit earlier, so I don't have the 12Z NAM data in, but the 6Z NAM should be good enough for our purposes here. Here is that trough moving across the central US here, a nice little compact short wave with a strong flow rounding the base of that trough. Going to continue to eject off to the northeast today. And again, as we said, it is expected to close off here with the core of the trough centered here somewhere across northern Nebraska into southern South Dakota. Some colder air aloft associated with this trough as well. And that stronger flow, as we talked about, going to be up here into the Midwest, that kind of in toward that Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa confluence area. Here's the axis of your trough. So uh, northeast of that, going to be your exit region and your main area for severe storms. Down here to the south, again, it's a little bit in question because we are on kind of the uh, backside of this trough, the entrance region of this trough. Uh, but we will have that strong, uh, th that strong moisture at the surface with the dry line uh, and plenty of ingredients for severe storms. It's just the synoptic scale forcing for ascent is a little bit in question in this environment because of the positioning of this trough. We move on into the afternoon. You see it just continues to move away from the region. Uh, not all that favorable uh, on the large scale for initiating storms on the dry line. But we'll have to see if we get strong enough heating, strong enough convergence on some spots of the dry line could lead to some isolated storm development. But it is, again, very conditional. Up here to the north, uh, that trough will continue to eject off to the northeast with time. Uh, that means that severe threat will move off to the north and east with time as well, going into the early after, uh, late mid-afternoon to early evening hours. Going down to the surface, let's take a look at the surface low here. So we'll fast forward it here for you. The surface low as prodded by the NAM Center here somewhere in northwest Kansas this morning as we speak, which is a pretty good depiction of how the surface low looks. We'll continue to move off to the north uh, and northeast today. Just kind of meander, move very slowly here. I'll zoom in for you. By 1 p.m. or so, just after lunchtime, surface low located somewhere here in central Nebraska. Uh, warm front extending down to the south. You can see the clear uh, kind of pressure tongue there leading up into the kinks and the iso bars leading up into the surface low. That is going to be our warm front dry line, very much uh, located just to the south of that down into western Oklahoma. So a very narrow warm sector here. Oftentimes that doesn't matter a whole lot, especially when your low is moving off to the northeast and your warm front is moving off to the nor northeast, lifting with any convective development that, that ha fires on the line. Uh, that still should be favorable for a, a corridor of development right here, just ahead of the surface low uh, from central Nebraska, perhaps as far west as south central Nebraska, uh, the Grand Island area, perhaps somewhere in there, uh, off to the southeast along the warm front there into southeast Nebraska. Surface low will again continue to lift off to the north northeast as we go into the uh, mid-afternoon hours and early evening hours. So that a severe threat will lift off to the north as well, kind of that cold core threat immediately ahead of the surface low. Uh, so just for your our um, viewing purposes here, your surface low right in here, uh, 500 millibar uh, core of the 500 millibar trough just uh, off to the northwest. Very close proximity for those two uh, with your warm front kind of draped down here, dry line down here. Uh, that is your classic kind of cold core type environment. Here is that uh, diagram we always show from Davies and Geyer 2004. Um, the schematic here for cold core tornado events. So 500 millibar closed low and surface low in very close proximity to one another which we have here. Warm front draped off to the east uh, with some sort of boundary cold front dry line here down to the south and southwest. And right at that intersection uh, is going to be your favorite area, that boundary intersection going to be your favorite area right ahead of the surface low for tornadic activity. And that appears to be the case here uh, in this setup right ahead of the surface low is going to be where you where you want to be. Probably we'll have some storms back in here very close to the core of the surface low and then some additional development and kind of an arc here uh, in that narrow moisture tongue out ahead to the southeast of the surface low. Again, down to the south, dry line is, uh, you know, 
going to be situated here somewhere across central Oklahoma. This is at 21Z. Going to move off a little bit to the east, so right across south, uh, eastern Kansas, south uh, central Oklahoma into north Texas. Your dry line is there. Very tight dry line still, especially across parts of Oklahoma and Texas. But again, where's your synoptic forcing coming from? That's my big question for today. But if any storm can fire along the dry line here, it would be favorable for all severe hazards given that strong low-level jet in place and strong instability in place, assuming uh, clearing moving in from the west. Here you go down uh, in uh, central Oklahoma there, just east of the OKC metro. Very strong instability, 2100 joules per kilogram mixed layer cape, uh, 74 over 69 at the surface, assuming that temperature will get a little bit higher as well. Fully uncapped, nice uh, moist layer there beneath some steep lapse rates aloft. Some turning there in the low levels of the hodograph. A little bit wonky again because we're on the back side of the, sh of the short wave, so a little bit of backing there in the mid levels. But we do have a, uh, enough low level shear to support a tornado threat, tornado threat approaching 200 meters square per second squared effective storm relative helicity. Uh, so we, th you know, all hazards would be in play for any storms that do fire along the dry line. But again, I just question the coverage of storms uh, in, on the, along the dry line. Uh, given that we don't really have uh, any forcing uh, on the synoptic scale. Perhaps a little bit of, of a dry line bulge there in southeast Kansas may be a, of a little bit of assistance. Uh, you're going to want to look for stronger convergence, areas of stronger convergence along the dry line. We do have pretty decent convergence along the dry line, dry line it looks like. Here, uh, any areas of slightly stronger convergence may be a little bit more favored for uh, convective development along the dry line. Uh, off to the north, we'll uh, look farther off to the north here, go back to our central plains sector. So again, by 18Z, I think, you know, right about lunchtime, just after lunchtime, we'll start to see storm initiation very close to the core of that surface low and the core of the trough aloft. We'll take a sounding here right in that narrow moist axis, uh, and then we'll take one just down here to the, to the southeast, where we have a little bit more real estate in the warm sector there. But this is a very favorable environment in, in this very cold core-esque setting. Uh, strong instability for a cold core type event, as, as we talked about. Over 2,000 joules per kilogram mixed layer cape. That is on the very high end for these cold core events. Strong low-level instability as well. 0 to 3 kilometer cape, 244 3 cape here. That is extremely strong low-level instability. We've talked about the importance of low-level instability in these setups. Uh, any spin near those surface boundaries, near the surface low, any vorticity at the surface will be able to be very efficiently stretched, tilted and stretched into the vertical to aid in tornado genesis in these updrafts, given such strong low-level instability and deep layer instability at play. Uh, so given the fact that we have very strong low-level and deep layer instability, that should foster a very uh, some, some very robust updraft, updrafts, especially for cold core standards, and with strong vorticity at the surface near those boundaries, near the surface low, and some stronger low-level shear as well, some curvature there in the low levels of the hodograph here closer to the surface low, that would foster that tornado threat. Could even, could even see a, a little bit more of a notable tornado there uh, in that arc of supercells right near the surface low. Down to the southeast, we're a little bit stronger, low-level shear perhaps, but still kind of the same thing. Moving off to the east a little bit, kind of lose those 60 dew points. It kind of pinches off to the north, but it, it, again, that boundary will be lifting with the convective development. So, so that should allow for those storms that form right on the surface low in that, in that pure cold core environment to maintain that, that severe threat. Down to the southeast, that's where the SPC kind of has the main tornado risk here. So we'll take a sounding there just kind of at the Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri uh, confluence area there. And uh, this is why they have that strong tornado threat in place. Strong instability here, almost 2,000 joules per kilogram mixed layer cape, uh, 73 over 65 at the surface, and very strong low level shear given that strong low level jet, strong veering and strengthening of the winds with height. Over 200 meters square per second squared effective storm relative helicity. Uh, any tornadoes in this environment, I should say, would have the tendency to be quite photogenic because, because we have strong low-level shear, but also that kind of backing of the mid-level and upper-level flow will allow for precipitation to be vented away from these uh, the updraft regions of these storms, uh, and therefore they will uh, that that will lead to very nice viewing for any tornadic activity that happens with these storms. That is a pretty pretty much a cold core classic. Uh, the, this kind of mid-level backing allowing for strong precipitation venting away from the mesocyclone regions of these storms. But all in all, a very good looking profile here for tornadoes. Perhaps a strong tornado or two, given strong low level and deep layer instability and stronger low level shear, especially with eastward extent. Again, the farther south and southeast you go, the convective development becomes much more in question, given the uh, you're moving away from the forcing. But up in here in this narrow corridor uh, to the southeast of the surface low and then uh, right on the surface low would be, be that favored corridor for that cold core tornado threat there uh, close to the warm front and uh, progressing uh, dry line slash cold front.
All right, let's take a look at some convection allowing models for today's setup. This is the 12Z Her hot off the press this morning. Uh, you can see it's, it's modeled the environment pretty well, uh, the ongoing convection pretty well, that, that band here across eastern Oklahoma moving off to the east nicely, a couple of stronger updrafts there in central, central Nebraska near, these, near the low, some band of rain and storms there across Iowa and Missouri moving off to the northeast. So pretty good uh, depiction of the convection as it was initialized here on the herb. So you see what happens here through the morning. We get some robust updrafts to start developing as early as 18Z, 1 p.m. or so, across south central Nebraska, northward ahead of the surface low. Those would start to probably start producing, have the potential to produce tornadoes early on in this setup. This is a 2 p.m. line of robust updrafts there ahead of that surface low there in uh, east central to north central Nebraska. And then we get some additional development down here to the south and east, closer to that warm front uh, in eastern Nebraska down into southwest uh, Iowa. Uh, and that would foster that all hazard threat as well. We do see some semblance of redevelopment here across northeast Oklahoma. A couple runs have shown this this morning. Uh, not a lot of consistency with this portion of the setup, but if a supercell can fire again, that all hazards, hazards threat would be at play. But again, it is conditional. The herd does have it here, but you can see previous runs. I'll go to, I'll go to our 11Z run here did not really show that. You see the same thing up here in Nebraska, uh, but not much down here in Oklahoma. A couple attempts at more robust updrafts here, some uh, stronger storms there into as far as, as northwest Missouri. But down here along the dry line, pretty quiet, uh, other than a couple of attempts here, um, but they don't really last all that long given a lack of support. But this particular run of the HER is showing the potential for redevelopment here with some supercells along the dry line there, northeast Oklahoma, southeast Kansas, perhaps as far south as south central Oklahoma as well, uh, away from our main threat up here across Nebraska and Iowa. Uh, we don't have our tw other 12Z cams in, but we can take a look at the 6Z 3K NAM perhaps. I don't usually look at the 3 kilometer NAM here. Did a decent job yesterday with depicting convection along the dry line, which was a little bit conditional. Uh, so we'll take a look at it here this morning just, to, just for giggles here. Uh, you can see as we go into the morning, pretty strong squall line there across eastern Oklahoma. Then we see development pretty quickly there, 18, 19 Z across uh, you know, central uh, Nebraska. And then our main line develops here across southeast Nebraska into north, uh, northeast Kansas with that all hazards threat, including the threat for strong tornadoes that moves off to the northeast pretty quickly. Not much development here. A couple of attempts down here along the dry line, uh, eastern Kansas into Oklahoma, but they do not last all that long at all. Uh, so that is the 3K NAM. We'll take a look at the 0Z ARW. Models were kind of all over the place last night, so take these with a grain of salt. We won't really have a little bit uh, better look at things until the 12Z models come in. Uh, but here is the ARW from uh, last night. You can see convection develops in eastern Nebraska there. Um, a little bit later than what it probably will be. Uh, this is at uh, 20, 21, 22Z. Yeah, it's way too late here in these setups. Some development down here along the dry line in eastern Kansas, but not all that robust. So not a great look here from the ARW as far as a severe threat goes. Uh, NSSL WERF model from last night as well. Um, you'll see how all over the place the models were as we go forward here on the NSSL WERF. Uh, didn't really uh, show much, if I recall, some uh, semblance of, of convection here in that main band across eastern Nebraska, northeast Kansas, but down here along the dry line, not much uh, of anything at all. A few supercells there in the band here uh, with some robust updraft velocity streaks. So definitely looks like our main severe threat, as we talked about, is going to be up here uh, in eastern Nebraska, east uh, western Iowa, far northwest Missouri, northeast Kansas, uh, with very conditional development farther to the south, although some models are depicting a few supercells along the dry line, but it is going to be quite conditional. Uh, down there as well. All right, let's take a look now at tomorrow, Saturday, April 27th. This has been kind of the most well-advertised uh, day of this event, and it is, as it has had some really uh, potent-looking uh, model solutions over the past several days. But there are a few flies in the ointment and some slight changes that we've seen with the models that have maybe allowed this setup to downtrend, which is a good thing for folks across Kansas and Oklahoma, as it was looking really, really potent uh, a couple, just a couple days ago. Uh, but we do see some things here that may have changed, uh, and so let's go into that right now. So this is, we'll start here uh, this evening on the 500 millibar map from the NAM. So here's your main trough with this first system, the Thursday-Friday system. Close on its heels is this second trough. Strong belt of flow on the backside, rounding the base of the trough. Going to take on a nice negative tilt as it moves into the plains going into the day on Saturday. So this is at 18Z, 21Z, uh, so you're forcing 
Unlike this last setup, yesterday's setup, uh, which was a little bit ill-timed as far as the main trough went, and therefore we didn't really get uh, a ton of robust dry line development, especially down into the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles, but uh, this trough is going to be much more well-timed for a daytime severe threat here across this area, perhaps fairly early initiation. Dry line should be back here to the west. Your forcing will be able to make its way into the region fairly early in the day. This is at 1 p.m. Central Daylight Time, and that trough will continue to swing through going into the uh, evening hours here across this region. One thing that has changed a little bit is we sl have a slightly more amplified solution, meaning slightly more meridional flow or north south, south to north flow in the exit region of this trough. And you, we've talked about how this has, uh, the, how this may play a role in these setups before. When you have a little bit more zonal flow aloft, uh, you have stronger deep layer shear because you know your winds, assuming they're out of the south or southeast, very strong veering of those winds with height. But if you have more meridional flow in the upper levels, you don't have quite as much directional shear. You can see there not as much turning of the winds with height to foster a more a slightly more unidirectional wind profile. So your directional shear tends to decrease and your initiating boundaries tend to be oriented more north-south as well. So your shear vectors tend to be oriented more north-south as well. And therefore, the angle between the initiating boundary and your uh, deep layer shear vectors are much less and therefore you have a tendency for more of a clustered linear mode. And so that has been the trend with this setup, uh, a trend a little bit away from discrete supercells uh, and more towards a more clustered, slightly linear mode. Still doesn't mean that we won't have a window for discrete supercells. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, but it does appear that we may see a tendency for a more messy mode with this setup than what was previously forecast, given a little bit more meridional, meridional flow in over the open warm sector here in this environment. Going back to our surface low here, and we'll take a look back here starting this evening. So our main surface low with today's threat up here into northeast Nebraska. We start to see cyclogenesis here this afternoon with this incoming trough down here in southeast Colorado, and that will continue to persist into the morning hours tomorrow. We'll start to see pretty strong surface low development by tomorrow morning out in that region, and that will tighten up going into the day. Here we are at 18Z, so 1 p.m., 4 p.m., very tight surface low there on the Kansas-Colorado border in southwest Kansas, uh, southeast Colorado. So very tight surface low there. I'll zoom in here for you so you can see it a little bit better. So there's our surface low. Clear warm front off here to the north through the pressure tongue. Dry line should be off here to the west, perhaps a little bit farther west than what was previously anticipated, uh, but we should have a nice little dry line setting up there for a broad area of uh, uh, moist air mass in the warm sector. So a lot of real estate for severe storms tomorrow. So we, we will have a long duration severe threat tomorrow regardless, regardless of storm mode, uh, but um, then that could foster that, that all hazard threat, but that the storm mode is going to perhaps preclude a little bit more of a robust event. So I'll zoom down here to the Southern Plains sector, take a look at the moisture here. Actually, I'll zoom back out to the contiguous U.S. sector. So this is tonight, all that moisture up into the Midwest with our cold core setup up there. Uh, but And you can see that the dry line here, oriented from kind of southeast Nebraska, southwestward into Texas, not going to move much. And then it's even going to retreat back to the west a little bit as that surface load develops in southwest Kansas, southeast Colorado. Uh, so we have, again, a very broad warm sector here for severe storms across the central and southern plains. I'll zoom in here for you once again. So you can see here all the way up from northern Kansas, I-70 corridor southward into Texas, very tight dry line once again uh, with the warm front draped off to the northeast and a very broad warm sector. So lots of real estate for the storms tomorrow uh, to work with. Uh, up here to the north as well, we may see a severe threat. This, this uh, frontal zone, this warm, you can call it a warm front, stationary front, whatever, not going to move a whole lot during the day. Uh, but it is going to foster a potential for severe weather here. We are going to be in between troughs up here, southeast Iowa, northern Missouri, southeast Iowa, into Wisconsin. Uh, areas farther to the northeast ahead of this trough are our main shortwave with the Thursday-Friday setup going to eject off to the northeast. And ahead of that, or near the base of that trough, going to be where your greatest severe threat will be. Uh, up there, probably in the Wisconsin corridor, I would suspect, although we've seen maybe a little bit of a more progressive nature to the trough up here, and so we might be a little bit behind the trough up here in Wisconsin, and then especially caught in the middle is this kind of corridor from northern Missouri into Iowa under this kind of ridging between the two uh, troughs here, the ejecting trough from our Thursday-Friday system and the incoming trough for the Saturday-Sunday system. 
kind of a little bit of ridging aloft. So don't suspect a lot of convective activity here across Iowa uh, into Wisconsin. Anything in Wisconsin there, eastern to southeast Wisconsin, probably is going to be your best bet for convective de development closer to the core of the jet streak there, but farther to the southwest. Probably not going to be a ton of convection given weaker deep layer shear, weaker forcing for ascent along that boundary. So let's go down to the southern sector here. Let's take a couple soundings. And once again, I'll show you here. I'll zoom in to the dry line here. So your dry line is right here, going to be your initiating boundary for this uh, portion of the severe weather setup. Uh, and let's take a look at our shear vectors with respect to that boundary. So this is at 18Z. We do see some comp component of perpendicularity to the initiating boundary, especially down here into Oklahoma. A little bit worse angle up here. Still, we're kind of uh, looking fairly favorable here across this area for a uh, a little bit more of a semi-discrete mode to start. So we, we should have a window for semi-discrete supercells. But as we move on into the afternoon, I would suspect that that would change a little bit. And we do see a little bit of a change here. Here's your dry line once again. Shear vectors are pretty much, uh, start to become a little bit more parallel to that init initiating boundary. So the window for semi-discrete supercells probably won't be all that long. Uh, given strong forcing, given the uh, shear vector orientation with respect to the initiating boundary, probably won't be all that long of a window for semi-discrete supercells. We could see some open warm sector development as well. As wide as the warm sector is, we'll have forcing over the warm sector. So we could have, in kind of a southeast uh, type fashion, open warm sector convection ahead of the main line here along the dry line. But along the dry line should be a little bit of a, a little bit of a window for semi-discrete and then a transition to more of a clustered, uh, messier mode going on into the afternoon hours. Uh, but let's take some soundings here from across the warm sector here. Take one ahead of the dry line here, western Oklahoma, maybe up here uh, into Kansas. And early convection is going to be an issue as well. Um, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue as was what was previously forecast. Let me go back here real quick to the early morning. So this is going to be at 10 a.m. I'll just take a sounding from the open warm sector here. We'll have strong, strong warm advection ongoing could foster some severe threat going into the morning hours, uh, some isolated severe threat going into the morning hours, but we do have a little bit of a capping inversion in place. Uh, so that may preclude a more robust severe threat in the morning. Uh, steep elevated mixed layer there, which has maybe trended upward in previous in uh, these last few runs. Uh, so that is a good sign in keeping convection at bay that will have a little bit of a cap on the atmosphere into the morning hours. Kind of a loaded gun sounding there. And that should keep the overall convective development in the morning a little bit at bay. Uh, and uh, that may lead to a more unsullied warm sector in the afternoon for that severe threat. So let's take a, a couple soundings here from later on. This is at 0Z up in, let's see, this one is up in uh, west central Oklahoma, just ahead of the dry line. Uh, and you can see a very favorable environment for all severe hazards there. Plenty of instability, 2,600 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape. Strong low level shear as well, strong low, low level jet in place. Uh, 250 meters square per second squared effective storm level relative helicity. Nice curvature there in the low levels of the hodograph. Plenty of deep layer shear for supercells. So that would foster that all hazards threat, uh, including the threat for tornadoes, perhaps a couple strong ones. Up here into Kansas, not quite as much uh, low level shear to work with, uh, but still strong instability and enough to foster a tornado threat there. Uh, a couple days ago, we were seeing a little bit, a uh, little bit more crazy hodographs here uh, in the low levels. Not so much the case today uh, with this particular run uh, and some, uh, some of the, the most recent runs. Not quite as potent with the kinematics here, but uh, certainly a favorable environment for uh, all severe hazards there across this region. Up into the Midwest, I'll take a sound here up into eastern Wisconsin uh, just to show you what's going to happen up here down along the front in southern Iowa as well, uh, kind of that secondary area of severe threat. Up there in Iowa, uh, definitely definitely less, inst oh, this is at 15Z, my bad. Let me take a couple soundings here. We'll take one at 21Z, eastern Iowa, uh, eastern, eastern Wisconsin, southern Iowa here, just to show you the environment up here. Plenty of instability, strong instability up here, so that we, we, we will have a strongly unstable air mass south of that stationary uh, slash warm front with some low level shear, fairly unidirectional wind profile up here uh, would foster more of a large hail damaging wind threat, but we could see a tornado or two along the boundary. Here in southern Iowa, strongly unstable as well, but again, you're forcing uh, kind of uh, absent from this region uh, with weaker deep layer shear. You see only about 30 knots of effective bulk shear, uh, very much on the margins for supercell. So if a storm or two can fire up here along the uh, frontal zone, along and south of the frontal zone, again, that's most likely in, in southeast Wisconsin, 
uh, you would see an all-hazards threat develop. Mostly a large hail damaging wind threat. Tornado threat will remain low, uh, but we could see a few storms here along the front, uh, and they would have that hail and wind threat, perhaps isolated tornadoes as well. Uh, but again, your greatest threat going to be down here from Kansas, uh, east of the surface low, southward along the dry line and eastward into the warm sector from Kansas into Oklahoma. Then the threat shifts east on Sunday, but again, we'll have to see how Saturday plays out to uh, know how Sunday is going to play out. So we'll, we'll uh, hold off on Sunday for now, um, but uh, this just wanted to give an idea of the overall uh, changes we've seen in the Friday-Saturday setup uh, with this video. We'll take a, a, lo a look at Sunday, perhaps in another video tomorrow if time warrants, uh, or on Sunday itself uh, if the, the setup does warrant it uh, as well. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, quite the stretch coming up here uh, over the next couple of days and perhaps into Sunday. Uh, again, we don't really know much about Sunday yet, but we will have, be back with more information as uh, the setup warrants for Sunday. But for now, uh, today and Saturday are going to be our main severe threats with this uh, stretch. Enhanced risk for today up in that northeast uh, Kansas, northwest Missouri, southwest Iowa, eastern Nebraska corridor. For the threat for perhaps a strong tornado or two, and some large to very large hail. Conditional threat farther south along the dry line, as we said, down into uh, southeast Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, western Arkansas, southern Missouri. Uh, just not sure it, how many storms are going to fire there given a lack of overall forcing for ascent. Uh, but if a storm or two can fire, it would foster that all hazard threat for today. But again, our main risk going to be up there in that uh, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas confluence area. Perhaps that cold core threat could develop as well just to the west of this enhanced risk area up across uh, central into uh, north central and northeast Nebraska uh, as well. Then we go into tomorrow, broad area of uh, heightened severe risk there, enhanced risk extending from southern Iowa down into north Texas, including uh, parts of the central and eastern Kansas, central Oklahoma. Uh, widespread severe risk given a lot of real estate for those storms to work with and that all hazards threat all hazards threat once again threat for strong tornadoes is there in that 10 hashed area kansas into oklahoma north texas a large to very large hail on the table as well as damaging wind so a very potent stretch of severe weather today and tomorrow and then we'll go into sunday where the spc has outlined that slight risk from the midwest into the arquitex so that's what we have going on for the next few days if you live in any of these areas keep those forecasts and your weather radios handy uh, as we could see several rounds of severe storms over the next uh, few days uh, in these areas so that's going to do it for this video thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one